Hi, Mark Donovan here from Falcon Imagery, and today I'm going to go over the topics of ADS-B in mode C transponder use in our national airspace system, specifically what airspace require those two technologies. The traditional transponder has been around literally since World War II and was initially developed, um, a radar-based radar -based technology was developed for enabling aircraft to identify themselves when interrogated by the radar signal. Um, as the decades moved on, uh, they went from what they called Mode A uh, transponder, which was basically transmitting that squawk code, identifying the aircraft, to Mode C uh, technology, which was uh, not only producing the um, squawk code, but also the pressure altitude of the aircraft that it was flying at. And then lastly, in most recent years, uh, Mode S transponder technology, which is the most advanced in terms of their traditional radar-based um, transponder where um, not only you put out a squawk code, but also the pressure altitude and registration information about the aircraft. Um, in very recent years, as a matter of fact, 2020, um, the FAA came out with ADS-B, or Automatic Dependent Surveillance Broadcast Technology, that is a satellite-based technology, mainly, um, where aircraft output a signal continuously, or every second, um, to ground-based ADS-B stations and to other aircraft flying in their vicinity uh, where they put information out again about a squat code, pressure altitude, uh, their velocity of the aircraft, and uh, registration information. And so what I'm going to do today is talk to you a little bit about um, the airspace requirements using both ADS-B out and mode C transponder use. So stay tuned and follow along. All right, let's get into it. Automatic Dependent Surveillance Broadcast, or ADS-B, and Mode C Transponder Requirements. So what is ADS-B? Um, again, it's known as the Automatic Dependent Surveillance Broadcast. Uh, that's its official name, or abbreviated ADS-B. Um, it's an advanced surveillance technology that combines an aircraft's positioning source, aircraft avionics, and a ground infrastructure to create an accurate surveillance interface between aircraft and air traffic control. It became effective in January of 2020. Um, it is a more precise uh, form of providing uh, information about an aircraft's uh, speed and position uh, than traditional radar-based, uh, transponder-based uh, uh, technology. And it consists primarily of two different services, ADSB out and ADSB in. And you can purchase uh, ADSB out uh, transponders or ADSB out slash in transponders or ADSB uh, receivers. Um, ADSB is continuously transmitted out and or receives equipped aircraft's identification, GPS determined position information, altitude, and velocity. Uh, ADSB requires no interrogation signal, which makes it different than usual transponder signals. So in general, ADSB is basically a GPS-based uh, type system of surveillance versus your traditional transponder is more of a radar-based type service for keeping um, um, information about an aircraft's position and velocity. So how does ADS-B out work? Uh, it broadcasts information out about an aircraft's GPS location, altitude, ground speed, and other data to ground stations and other aircraft once per second. Per 14 Code of Federal Regulations 91.225, um, it describes ADSB out airspace and equipment requirements, and 91.227 describes ADSB out equipment performance requirements. ADSB in provides operators of properly equipped aircraft with traffic position and weather information delivered directly to the cockpit. So, what airspace is required to have ADSB out usage? So again, per 91.225, the FAA requires ADS-B out capability in the continental United States. Um, ADS-B out is required in any airspace that requires the use of a transponder as specified in 91.215. Um, ADS-B out is required in the following airspaces. Class Alpha, Bravo, and Charlie airspace. Class Echo airspace at or above 10,000 feet MSL, excluding air airspace that's at and below 2,500 feet AGL, or above ground level. Uh, within 30 nautical miles of a Class B primary airport uh, with a Mode C transponder veil. 
and above the ceiling and within the lateral boundaries of Class Bravo or Charlie airspace up to 10,000 feet MSL. And then lastly, Class Echo airspace over the Gulf of Mexico at and above 3,000 feet MSL within 12 nautical miles of the United States coast. So let's talk a little bit about a Mode C transponder that's also required in your aircraft in various types of airspace. So transponder transmits specific information about your aircraft. There are three types of transponders. Mode A, which is your most basic transponder, transmits only a four-digit identifying transponder squawk code, the traditional squawk code. Mode C transmits transponder squawk code information and pressure altitude information when activated. Required to operate in certain classes of airspace. This is the key one minimum required uh, today in many types of uh, airspace. And we'll get into those types of airspace in a moment. And then mode S, this is the most advanced, newest uh, form of a transponder. It transmits transponder squawk code, pressure altitude, and aircraft registration information when activated. So where is a mode C transponder required? 91.215 describes the requirements for an aircraft to use a transponder with mode C capability or pressure altitude reporting capability. Airspace requiring transponder with mode C support are Class Alpha Bravo and Charlie airspace, Class Echo airspace at or above 10,000 feet MSL, excluding airspace at and below 2,500 feet AGL, within 30 nautical miles of a Class B primary airport, the mode C veil, transponder veil again, excluding airspace below 1,200 feet outside of the lateral boundaries of the surface area of the airspace designated for that airport above the ceiling and within the lateral boundaries of Class Bravo or Charlie airspace up to 10,000 feet MSL. And lastly, Class E airspace over the Gulf of Mexico at and above 3,000 feet MSL within 12 nautical miles of the U.S. coast. All right, the last slide is the summary slide for ADSB Mode C transponder usage. Uh, so in Class A airspace, Mode C and ADSB out are required. Two-way communications is required as well as with a clearance in that communication. Uh, class A is for IFR flight only. Class Bravo, again, mode C and ADSB out are required. Um, and two way communications with the clearance is required in Class Bravo. And that ADSB and mode C requirement goes up to the ceiling of that Class Bravo airspace or within its lateral boundaries up to 10,000 feet MSL. Class Charlie airspace required mode C and ADSB out as well, uh, required with established two way communications, not necessarily clearance, just two way communications. If there's no mode C veil, you may fly underneath a class C shelf without ADSB out. And class delta, there's no requirement for mode C or ADSB out. Two way communications required to establish um, if you're talking with the tower at that airport. Class echo, mode C and ADSB out are required at or above 10,000 feet MSL. Two way communications not required. If above 3,000 feet MSL within 12 nautical miles of the U.S. coast over the Gulf of Mexico, mode C and ADSB out are required. And class Gulf, mode C and ADSB out are required at or above 10,000 feet MSL. Um, Two-way communications is not required because it's uncontrolled airspace. So hopefully now you have a better understanding of ADSB and mode C transponder use and where you're required to use them in our national airspace system. And hopefully uh, you found this video useful. If you did, consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel so you get notified on my next video.